Good Tuesday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversations Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Tuesday. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Teganovich, and in today's entertainment spotlight, you're being part of my conversation with Dr. Kapil Parak. His new book, Searching for Health, is out today. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversations Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Tuesday headlines in national news. Murder case against ex-cop and Floyd's death goes to the jury. The murder case against former officer Derek Chauvin in the death of George Floyd went to the jury Monday in a city on edge against another round of unrest like the one that erupted last year over the video of the man with Chauvin's knee on his neck. The jury of six white members and six black or multiracial ones was sent off to begin deliberating after nearly a full day of closing arguments in which prosecutors argue that Chauvin squeezed the life out of Floyd last May in a way that even a child knew was wrong. The defense contended that the now-fired officer acted reasonably and that the 46-year-old man died of an underlying heart condition and illegal drug use. After closing arguments were done, Judge Peter Cahill rejected a defense request for a mistrial based in part on comments California Representative Maxine Waters that protesters could get more confrontational if there is no guilty verdict. The judge told Chauvin's attorney, Congresswoman Waters may have given you something on appeal that may result in this whole trial being overturned. He added, I wish elected officials would stop talking about this case, especially in a manner that is disrespectful to the rule of law and to the judicial branch. Chauvin, 45, is charged with second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter. All three charges require the jury conclude that Chauvin's actions were a substantial casual factor in Floyd's death and that his use of force was unreasonable. The most serious charge carries up to 40 years in prison. The city has also been on edge in recent days over the police killing of a 20-year-old man in a nearby suburb on April the 11th. Under the law, police are given certain latitude to use force and their actions are supposed to be judged according to what a reasonable officer in the same situation would have done, a point the defense stressed repeatedly. In more national news, medical ruling says Capitol Cop Signick died of natural causes. Capitol Police Officer Brian Signick, who was injured while confronting rioters during the January 6th insurrection, suffered a stroke and died from natural causes. The Washington, D.C. Medical Examiner's Office ruled on Monday a finding that lessens the chances that anyone will be charged in his death. Investigators initially believed the officer was hit in the head with a fire extinguisher based on statements collected early in the investigation, according to two people from me with the case, and they later thought the 42-year-old Sicknick may have ingested a chemical substance, possibly bear spray, that may have contributed to his death. But the determination of a natural cause of death means the medical examiner found that a medical condition alone caused his death, it was not brought on by injury. The determination is likely to significantly inhibit the ability of federal prosecutors to bring homicide charges in Sicknick's death. U.S. Capitol Police said that the agency accepted the medical examiner's findings, but that the ruling didn't change the fact that Sicknick had died in the line of duty, courageously defending Congress and the Capitol. In business news, stocks closed lower, pulling indexes below record highs. Technology companies helped drag U.S. stocks broadly lower on Monday, pulling the indexes below the record highs they reached last week. The S&P 500 dropped 0.5%, shedding more than a third of its gain from last week. Tech stocks were the biggest weight on the market, but the losses were shared broadly by a mix of banks, energy companies, and others that rely on direct consumer spending. The pullback came as bond yields mostly moved higher after easing last week. Rising bond yields tend to make shares in technology companies that have had a strong run-up over the past year look too expensive. The tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite slid 138 points, or 1%, to close at 13,915. The S&P 500 fell 22 points to 4,163. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 123 points, or 0.4%, to close at 34078 And finally in entertainment news, Ziggy Marley happy to be part of Earth Day concert. The pandemic can't stop Ziggy Marley from celebrating the Earth. The son of reggae icon Bob Marley and Rita Marley will be one of the highlights of Nat Geo's Earth Day Eve 2021 streaming concert on Wednesday. Anytime they call me, I'm there for this. 
anytime they want me, he said from Los Angeles. Everything is being done a bit different, but we're still doing it, which is the main point. Marley will be joined at the concert by Willie Nelson, Yo-Yo Ma, Maggie Rogers, among others. A world premiere new music video will also air from My World Jacket. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Teganovich. Enjoy. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Free yourself from negativity. Negativity seems to be everywhere. You can choose to create a space around you that is free from negativity, a space that protects you from the things other people do or say. Even though people may have the best intentions, at times they make you feel vulnerable and hurt. It may not even be what they said. It may be the way they said the words they chose. It might just be a day when you feel susceptible or off balance. In either case, you can avoid these negative feelings or comments by imagining yourself surrounded by a golden shell. This shell is permeable, but allows in thoughts and words that are affirming, comforting, and positive. This is your sphere of positivity. You can use this technique anytime you need to feel safe, secure, and loved. Today, find ways to care for yourself, making sure you respond in positive and supportive ways as you go about and enjoy the day. As I mentioned, Dr. Kapil Parag is featured in today's Entertainment Spotlight, right here on Conversations Daily News. For Conversations Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Dr. Kapil Parak joined me recently on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about his new book, Searching for Health, the smart way to find information online and put it to use. Here's a bit of our conversation. You know, I read this book with a lot of interest, and I think one of the big things that I took away from Dr. Parak, and we can begin the conversation there, is not only being informed, but also making sure that we're taking that information and still being able to seek medical advice. How important has that, has that marriage been for you to share that, yes, it's good for us to do our research, but also make sure that we're also listening to the professionals, too? Yeah, absolutely. That is a, a cornerstone of the book, and I'm so glad yeah, you're leading with that. So I, I see patients in my practice. Uh, as a cardiologist, I still I still see patients uh, even today. And I feel, you know, and I work at Google um, the rest of my time. And so that interplay happens almost on a daily basis, a weekly basis in my life, where on the one hand, when I'm seeing my patients, I'm trying to use that time effectively to help them with their care. And sometimes they'll bring in information that may, um, that they find hard to introduce into the interview and I have to work with them to try and make that useful. And many physicians um, don't honestly have the time and capacity to do this. And then um, in my work at Google, I try and um, find products to help um, make that information more available and easy to find. And so combining those two worlds was really the motivation behind the books. So it's really this idea of not only can you find this information, but how do you make yourself heard? You know, all too often we go into a doctor's office and it's, it, there's a big information gap there. And so it's hard to make yourself heard and to use the, the, the things that you found online to share the concerns that you have in a way that's collaborative and effective. So, that, so really appreciate you highlighting that. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. We'll be back with you guys on tomorrow with more news. Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Teganovich, and of course, your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.